Part A of number five, you should, you should be able to crank out, no big deal. This is inactive, okay? If we're finding the area of R, this is a case where we're going to have to split it up, though. To find R, it's going to be two integrals. So the first piece is from 0 to 4 <clears throat> of f of x plus the integral from 4 to 6 of g of x. And then I'm just going to plug in those specific functions here and integrate. So the antiderivative of the square root of x would be uh, 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. We're evaluating that from 0 to 4, plus the antiderivative of g of x would be uh, 6x minus x squared over 2. That's going to be evaluated from 4 to 6. So when we plug 4 into the first piece, <clears throat> uh, 4 to the 3 halves, you take the root first. The square root of 4 is 2, 2 cubed is 8. When you plug in 0, you get 0 plus um, 36 minus 36 over 2 minus, make sure you put in parentheses, 24 minus 16 over 2 when you plug in 4. Should that be equal to is here? All right, 16 thirds plus uh, 36 minus 24 is 12. Negative 36 over 2 plus 16 over 2 is uh, negative 20 over 2. Yeah, negative 20 over 2, which is negative 10. Guess what? We didn't have to worry about a denominator there. So that's 16 over 3 plus 12 minus 10 is 2. So that's 6 over 3. So we should get 22 over 3 for the area of the region. Good with part A. Part B says region R is the base of a solid for each y, where y is between 0 and 2, the cross section of the solid taken perpendicular to the y axis is a rectangle whose base, li uh, base lies in R, whose height is 2 y, but write but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the volume of the solid. So um, this one is in terms of y. Okay, this one's in terms of y. So first of all, we need to figure out our area formula in terms of y for a rectangle. <clears throat> and they give us the height of the rectangle because rectangles are different from squares. Squares are side squared, but this is rectangle base times height. They give us the height is 2y. Well, how do we find the base? Let's look at our picture. We're talking about rectangles perpendicular to the y-axis. So that would be g of y, that's the top function, minus f of y. So we need to rewrite these functions in terms of y. So um, f would be y squared is equal to x. <coughs> and um, Let's see here, x, 6 minus y is the other one. 6 minus y is our g of y. So it's 6 minus y minus y squared is our height. 6 minus y minus y squared, or excuse me, the base of the rectangle. <clears throat> and actually I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to erase that for a second. We're just going to add up all those rectangles from 0 to 2. And don't forget your dy on the end. Okay, height times the base. <clears throat> this is the top function, that's the bottom function. Okay? Those give you the heights of, or the lengths of the bases. And that's all you have to do. You just have to write, but do not evaluate. C says there is a point P on the graph of F, at which the line tangent to the graph of F is perpendicular to the graph of G. Find the coordinates of point P. Okay, so it says there's a point P on the graph of F. So let's just kind of try and give ourselves a visual representation of this. Okay, there's some point P. I don't know where it is. Maybe there. It may be further down. 
it's probably actually further down the uh, closer to the y-axis. How do I know that? It, because it says the line tangent to the graph is perpendicular to the graph of G. Well, G is a straight line. Okay, so we've got to find where is a line, a tangent line, perpendicular to that line. So it's probably more down here. Okay, probably more down here. Um, <clears throat> but does it make sense what they're describing now? And once you look at the picture and kind of digest the words. All right, so how do we figure out what the point is? Okay, the line tangent to the graph. What do we need every time we talk about a tangent line? Derivative. Okay, we need the derivative of f. So f prime would be 1 over 2 square roots of x. Derivative of the square root of x is 1 over 2 square root of x. Okay. Um, so we need to know what's the relationship between perpendicular lines? Opposite reciprocal slope. Okay. So what is the slope of g of x? negative 1, so the opposite reciprocal of that is positive 1. So we want to know, well, where's the derivative of f equal positive 1? Where does it have a slope of positive 1? Um, so to solve this, you get 1 is equal to multiply both sides by 2 square root of x, divide by 2, so 1 over 2 is equal to the square root of x. How do you get rid of the square root? You square it, so you get 1 fourth is the x. But it wants the coordinates of P, so not just the X, it also wants the Y. Um, so we go back to the original, what is F of 1 fourth? That's the square root of 1 fourth, which is 1 half. So P is <coughs> 1 fourth, 1 half. And I was correct when I backed my thing up to be closer to the x and y axis. That is more of where that tangent line would be perpendicular to g. Okay.